Happy Juneteenth, everyone. I told you I'd be back with a video on all the drama that's going on in publishing, and I figure why not do it on Juneteenth, a day that is very important to black people. If you don't know what Juneteenth is, I suggest you Google it. Google is free, and I am not here to hold your hand about that. Also, please kind of ignore the mess going on back there. I'm currently renovating my office, so things are a little disorganized right now, but don't worry about that, just ignore it. So now on to the drama. First, in the past month, we've had not one, but two agencies implode. Red Sofa, and I can actually never say this name. I feel so terrible because it's actually the owner's name, but she's terrible anyway, so who cares? Um, Corvisiero, I don't know. Both of those agencies have imploded due to racism. Red Sofa founder and owner, Don Federicks, decided it would be a good idea during the protests in Minneapolis to call the police on looters. She felt scared for the businesses down the street and their, the alarm on the convenience store was going off and she felt that calling the police would let the police notify the owners because that's not what alarms do anyway. The whole point of alarms isn't to notify the owners. And like, you really thought that during these protests that this was a good time to call the cops on presumably black people because some, something tells me she wouldn't have had such fear if the looters weren't black. My own assumptions. But I'm not alone in those assumptions. Several of her agents resigned, some of her bigger name clients fired her, and then she decided to just close shutters. But that's not the end of the story with her. She decided to go ahead and sue a few agents that have retweeted things about her saying it's defamation and libel. So now there is a court case pending about that because she couldn't be messy enough. Next is Corvisiero, whatever, that, that agency owned by Marissa Corvisiero. She tweeted during the protests and riots that, what is it? This is how you do it. Make your point, take a stand, and don't hurt other people or damage property in the process. No violence is acceptable ever. The whole point is to be heard and seen to help make things better. These people are awesome, so proud. Her whole thing is about how you should protest the right way and anything that escalates into violence is the wrong way. A lot of white people like to ignore the whole history of that's how America itself was founded. Like, there was riots and protests and violence, but it's only okay when they do it. Not when people of color, specifically black people, are trying to be heard and get their point across and vent their frustration over the murders of our people. They were mad about taxes and started rioting and killing. We mad about our lives being taken. But that, that was last video. I'll just say, as MLK said, rights are the voice of the unheard. So with Corvisiero, whatever, I'm just call it agency, <laughs> agency, get it? So several agents there have resigned and once she started seeing that people were resigning, she thought it was a good idea to just fire everyone because they can't break up with you if you break up with them first. <laughs> I just, 
I, I can't even believe this is real life right now. It is crazy. So she fires her agent, but keeps the clients. She's gonna run everything by herself now. But luckily, the a lot of the agents that have left both agencies have been finding jobs. Clients have been pick, being picked up by agents. So the people that are on the right side of history are already being rewarded. Next on my list is also dealing with the riots and everything with Black Lives Matter becoming a bigger thing. People decided to show that they do care about black lives and especially in publishing because everyone knows that publishing can be very white woman centric. So a lot of agents and editors have opened up their DMs to answer questions. If they were closed to queries, some of them have opened specifically just for black indigenous people of color. And like every everyone's being all rah rah, we love black people now. So if you're a black writer, I'd suggest taking advantage of this right now. I can't even lie, I've like slid into some DMs, gotten some questions about publishing answered. It's actually been very informative and I'm glad that people are opening up and being more open to creating opportunities because I'm a firm believer of equity, not equality. Like, if you don't know the difference between them, again, Google is free. I, I've actually gotten to get some headway in some opportunities I would like to explore in the future, so I'm... I'm personally excited about that. Even, even if a lot of this is brought out from white guilt, I am happy to accept it and use what I can to better myself and my career. Which leads me to the next thing. So during all this, young adult author L.L. McKinney called out the fact that white authors are usually paid more than black authors and she called for everyone to well, not everyone she's called for specifically white authors to share their advances so that we can better see the disparity of pay she <laughs> made a nice tweet about if you need a hashtag she'll even give you one and that's what created publishing paid me it has been a movement within publishing right now. It is, it's very interesting to watch everything happening and like kind of disheartening to see books and authors you know deserve so much get next to nothing. Just to put this in perspective, N.K. Jeminson only person in history not just only black woman not just only woman not just only black person only person in history to win a hugo award for every book in a series and get it back to back three years in a row her latest book the city we became she earned sixty thousand dollars in an advance for that book a white man, debut author, someone actually I nor anyone I know have ever heard of, received $800,000 for a badly written erotica romance. Let, let that sink in. History making black author, 60000 After been writing for years, white man, debut author, 800000 I don't have that much of a hope that I will ever cumulatively make $800,000 on all of the books I will ever write and publish. He made that on his debut that no one has ever heard of. Like that's not to rag on him. Like I don't mean to be picking on him or anything because it was honestly kind of brave of him to admit that, especially in this climate 
and he did so I give him props for that but just look at those differences I will also say that NK Jemison has said that she prefers lower advances because then she gets to her royalties faster and those earn her a lot more so there is that to take into consideration but another example to show this is Danielle Clayton author of The Bells ooh, earned I believe $45,000 for The Bells as an advance Scott Teagan I believe his last name is Oh, he's a cis white man who wrote about a black male teen and got a hundred thousand dollar advance for that book. So black woman writing about black people, forty five thousand. White man writing about black people, hundred thousand dollars. The do, do y'all see this disparity? So hopefully this coming to light will give agents and authors more power of putting some weight onto publishers to give black authors what they deserve. I will put a link below to the spreadsheet that has been created for Publishing Paid Me. A lot of the stuff on there is anonymous, but it is like morbidly fascinating information. But to tie into Publishing Paid Me, we have two other things happening in publishing. The first is an article that exposed some of the racist practices of the New York Times bestseller list. It talks about how if a book hits the New York Times bestseller list, on average it earns 57% more sales. And the disparity between how many white authors versus how many authors of color get put on that list is staggering. And they, they point out that there has not been a black debut author on the list in two years. I forget how many they said for white authors. I think it was like 22. But <laughs> there's been too many good books out there that I know have sold well. And it's funny because right after this article came out, suddenly the New York Times bestseller list decided, oh, at number 10 this week is this black debut author. Despite her and two other authors, black authors, that debuted that week book being sold out like everywhere. She's the only one that hit the list and she only hit number 10. Like, call me a conspiracy theorist, but to me that very much showed that New York Times bestseller list just wanted to do some performative wokeness. Especially since the very next week she was no longer on the list. Coincidence? I think not. In response to the expose about the list has been the movement of black out the list. It is encouraging everyone to buy two books by black authors in the hopes that we boost sales of black authors books so much that we can just have all black authors on the list. So far it hasn't happened but there has been a resurgence of some of the I, I call them the usual suspects the books you expect to see on the New York Times bestseller list especially when white people want to feel better about themselves like Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give and On The Come Up are both back on the list it again coincidence Maybe, maybe not. That's no shade to Angie. That's more shade to white people who are trying to assuage their white guilt by reading these books about black lives and about police brutality to make themselves feel better. To be like, well, at least I'm not like Haley. That, yeah. So... <laughs> 
like the next thing on this list, I tell you, there's been so much going on in publishing. On the day that the Supreme Court upheld DACA, a new book was announced. It's called Love in English by Maria Andrew. And it's supposed to be about a an immigrant teen, a, Lat a Latinx immigrant teen's experiences. Well, we have another American dirt on our hands, guys. Because this Latinx American teen it's supposed to be from Argentina and supposedly owned voices is written by a white Latinx woman from Spain. Actually, I, I believe most people say that if you are from Spain, you are not Latinx because Latinx means from Latin America. So no, she's, she's not Latinx at all. So just a white Spanish woman writing about Latinx experiences being immigrants. She received a two book major deal for that. And for those of you not in the know, a major deal means at least $500,000. So while we're looking at publishing paid me about how people of color are not being paid the same way white people are, on the day the Supreme Court upheld DACA, we announce a book by a white Spanish woman about Latin American experiences. Just slow clap it out. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't even know what to say about that because honestly it's not my lane. I am not Latinx so I am sure other Latinx booktubers or author tubers or people on Twitter would be much more eloquent and knowledgeable about what they say on this but I just I call bullshit but I I would like to end this video that is longer than I expected it to be on a good note so today is Juneteenth and several black authors and editors and just people in publishing came together to create a new book festival. It's purely virtual called Juneteenth Book Fest. I had the amazing opportunity to live tweet some of the panels today, which is part of what took me into the evening to actually record this video. I was too busy watching these amazing panels. But it's it's beautiful seeing these all black panels talk about things not about being black and how hard things are. Got to see about writing romance and writing middle grade and world building and all the things that we know we can talk about but most festivals don't allow us to because we can only be on diversity panels. So it was just like a beautiful thing and oh goodness I guess it's about to storm so I'm gonna hurry up and wrap this up before it starts pouring. But Juneteenth Book Festival was a beautiful thing. It is all on YouTube right now. So you can, as soon as this video ends, you can hop on over to their channel. I will put a link down below so you can watch all of these amazing panels with authors like Kwame Mbalia, um, editor, agent, and writer Patrice Caldwell, um, writer Karen Strong, Tracy Dion, like some amazing people. I, I encourage you all to go and watch. So turn off this video now and go watch. I'll catch you later. Bye.